Okay, so this video is going to be on how to find the invariant, um, and to me, this is probably the most important video uh, in this like whole correctness series, because this is the part that I personally feel that uh, they didn't explain at all, um, and so it all made it seem like magic until kind of like this clicked for me, and then everything else made sense. Um, so the question is, we're looking at this code. We start with the precondition, ally is greater than or equal to zero. We need to end up with the, the post condition, z is equal to y times x, and uh, we've got this little algorithm here. Um, so whenever I even like looked through the solutions, it was a case of like, they said a bunch of stuff that was true and then it came out as true at the end, but I, I just never really got how they were actually coming up with an invariant. So this is the process that um, I've been having a lot of success with just to actually come up with an invariant. Um, so I'm just going to start with, uh, over here, I'm just going to change color. Um, the kind of like rule that we know, so we basically have like uh, so if we've got a statement p here, and then we've got our while b do stuff, um, and if we've got p here, and our statement here that does stuff, and p here, um, then what we know at the end, for certain, is, because this is pr uh, proven by induction, we know p, and because just by the definition of a while loop, that uh, sorry, that's an atrocious b, um, let me fix that. Because, uh, just of how while loops work, we know that not b must be true. And that's kind of like the basis of, of how we start looking for invariants, uh, or an invariant that matters, more specifically. Because the question is, how do we turn this, this is what we have, how do we turn this into this, because this is what we need? Um, and so the first logical step in that process is saying, okay, well, what of that information uh, do we actually have? And well, we know b, right? Because while a does not equal y, is b. Um, so a does not equal y is represented as b. Therefore, not b is a equals y. And since that is our b statement, and we know for certain that not b is true at the end, we actually know when we finish our first piece of known information is that a equals y. We know that for certain. When the loop terminates, a equals y. Um, cool. So. What we don't have, and p, right? Because we don't know what this predicate is, uh, sorry, uh, this um, invariant is. Um, but we know that this and this will be true at the end for anything. So, I mean, again, the invariant doesn't have to be useful. This could be, at the end, we know for certain that that and 4 equals 4. It's just that that doesn't help us. So the question is, what does help us? Well, to find out what helps us, we need to know what we're trying to get. And what we're trying to get is here. Z is equal to y times x. So the question is, what information are we missing? Um, obviously we can't prove that z is equal to y times x just because we know that a equals y. What extra information would we need to prove this? Um, and so just kind of like, it, it's kind of really obvious in this case even, um, if, and this is just a hypothesis, we haven't proven anything at this point, but if z is equal to, uh, since at this point a is going to be equal to y, if z was equal to a times x and a was equal to y, then we could prove that z was equal to y times x at the end of this, right, so if this, uh, if this was p, hypothetically, if that was p, then that makes all of our problems go away, because that would mean that p and not b can guarantee our post condition. So the question is then, we want to go back up into this statement and actually prove that this is p, uh, which I'll probably do in another video, just keep these nice and short, but to me the big 
missing piece of logic in all of this was how do we even know what we're trying to look for in the first case? And to me it's just, so what information do we have? We have not B, so A equals Y. What are we missing? What else do we need to make this post condition true, since we know that not B is true? And that kind of forms our hypothesis um, invariant. And now if I can prove that Z equals A times X is true at this location, this location and this location, uh, then it is an invariant by induction, and then that is my partial correctness proof for the entire algorithm. So I'll go through the steps for that next.